we uh, are playing a very uh, active role, uh, as other cities across Canada are forced to do as well, when provincial and federal governments don't come to the table with enough resources. They are ultimately responsible for housing uh, people who need it, and uh, at, we're pushing hard to leverage that support and putting all our resources on the table. And that's where we need to keep stepping up to the next level. We're not that far off uh, uh, solving uh, homelessness, uh, but there are still hundreds of people outside. The Vancouver mayor backtracking a little bit on a major promise he made during his 2008 campaign that he would end homelessness by 2015. That's a year away and there's still 500 homeless on the streets of Vancouver. Add to that the fact that the city has ordered an eviction notice against the occupiers who have camped out at Oppenheimer Park and it seems Robertson is backing away but can he be blamed? Some news contributor Ada Slavinsky joins me now out of Vancouver. Help us understand what's going on here because there's a lot of backstory to the to this drama. Mm -hmm. So, in a nutshell, there were some homeless people camping out in Oppenheimer Park, which is a park in the downtown east side, so a very troubled neighborhood in Vancouver, lots of homeless there. They were given an eviction notice by the city because, of course, camping and setting up structures in a public park is forbidden. Uh, and in response, they actually had some First Nations come and support them and issued an eviction notice right back to the city saying, well, hang on a second, this is unceded land, as the city declared at the end of June, never surrendered, uh, never really formally taken away from the First Nations. So they're saying, actually, uh, even though this is city property, you don't have a right to be here. Uh, so basically what happened last uh, few days ago was they stormed city council uh, with their big signs and, and wanting to end homelessness. Uh, came in, secured a meeting with Mayor Robertson. Uh, he took them into a separate room. Media weren't allowed in there. Uh, they had a little chat, and when they came out, uh, the mayor was saying, actually, you know what, I support these people. They do have legitimate concerns. So he seems to have done a bit of an about-face, but we still can't get a straight answer on if and when these people will be evicted. It sounds like quite a promise to make to say, I'm going to definitively end homelessness by 2015, and now he's saying, look, the reason that this necessarily hasn't come true is because we need funding from senior levels of government and housing is primarily a provincial jurisdiction. Did, was he drawing these distinctions, do you know, when he was campaigning and saying that he's the guy to, to solve these ills and vote for him for this reason? He wasn't. I mean, it's a very um, ideological promise to make, you know, this totalitarian approach, I'm going to end all homelessness, which is, is next to impossible. There are so many factors. Uh, some people don't want to be housed. We're dealing with mental illness. We're dealing with addiction. Um, when you look at the issue of jurisdiction, uh, the provincial government definitely has a big role to play in here when you look at BC housing. Uh, and we can talk about how some of those funds were mismanaged when um, the, the Portland Hotel Society obviously accused of uh, mishandling millions of dollars. Uh, so it's not just the mayor's responsibility here and I think he uh, dug himself into a bit of a hole uh, promising that you know I'm going to be the mayor who, who does this and when you do that when you take ownership of an issue like that then you know you can't help but but shoulder some of the blame when it doesn't turn out the way you promised. And, and help me out here this is not a loaded question I, I don't know the answer many people would say you want to have a dual pronged approach you want to have the emergency shelters which, which I understand uh, the city has opened since 2008 some more spaces fine but you also want to have an economic development approach so you can help people help themselves get out of their situation and they can go on and be uh, prosperous uh, economic net contributors to society D does Robertson have uh, an equally weighted uh, plank of, of economic improvements to help these people well, I think the, the place that his approach is really being tied up is with the short-term housing. Uh, we hear it come up again and again when you talk to people who are homeless that they don't even feel safe going into those short-term shelters. So it seems like the resources are there uh, afterwards, but if you can't get e even people to, to go in and 
sleep in a shelter for a night, they can't really access any of the resources that are available, so really that, that's wasted money. And that really seems to be the problem. These places are infested with, with rats, with bed bugs. Um, you have a lot of drug use. People time and time again tell me, I feel safer on the streets. Uh, broken uh, light bulbs, you know, in the bathroom, if you're going there in the middle of the night, there's glass all over the floor, uh, needles, and it basically they feel uh, in the shelter they're not as safe as they are on the street. So that, that really seems to be the issue. Um, and you know a lot of municipal uh, responsibility around there when it comes to, to policing and, and dealing with that, but for sure uh, BC Housing has a, a huge role to play in that as well. Now I understand that the overall homeless population in Vancouver is, is pretty much the highest it's ever been since the city began counting these. Uh, is there a sense of what the isolated variable here is and that yes, it's city policy to blame Robertson's not doing a good enough job? Is it the proliferation of drugs and dealers and the crime that, that spills out of that? Well, it's so hard to say, you know, whose fault is this really? Right. Um, there's so many issues at play, and of course, everything's interconnected, right? So the province does have to uh, provide some funding and, and work there, but, you know, the, the municipality, when it comes to uh, policing, um, a lot of these people do uh, interact with police on a, a daily basis. So, I mean, a lot of issues there. But I think, you know, th there's, there's two real mistakes that, that Mayor Robertson has made. Uh, one being declaring the city on unceded land. I mean, nobody was really calling for that. Um, it's something that we, we hear politicians pay homage to all the time whenever there's a public event. You know, we're on unceded Coast Salish territory. But the... Um, the city of Vancouver took that one step further and formally declared this land unseated. Uh, so, so, you know, really fueling the fire there. And then the second one, of course, being this um, take all approach of I'm going to end homelessness by 2015. So, you, you know, he is doing some, uh, Mayor Robertson is doing some good things uh, when it comes to securing funding for um, a more affordable housing. Uh, he works very closely with some developers and, and is able to secure that, you know, so he's not doing everything wrong, but he has uh, made things more difficult for himself um, in two ways that really could have been totally avoided. It sounds like an outlandish promise to make, and it'll be interesting to see how how this impacts the next election and whether or not Kirk Lapointe, his challenger, is going to be able to present a, a more sort of hard line or fiscally conservative approach to that. As Slavinsky, thanks very much for joining us on this. I look forward to checking in with you on Vancouver shenanigans again in the future. <laughs>